Welcome to the Intel Edge Innovation Executive Fireside Chat. This video series showcases the great things our ecosystem partners are doing with their Intel-based AI-enabled offerings. Now, today we'll be discussing MeldCX Vision Analytics Solution Viana with Thor Torecha. MeldCX is an information technology company that empowers businesses and individuals to create premier customer experiences by using AI technologies. So welcome, Thor. Can you tell us a little bit more about your role and your company's solutions? Thank you for having me today, Bill. Um, my name is Thor Torecha, and I'm the EVP of Global SaaS here at MeldCX. Um, a little bit about MeldCX, we focus on melding customer experience. We specialize also in solving complex problems, and we use AI and data science to help our customers make better decisions. So essentially what we do is we teach cameras new tricks and to be able to see, analyze, and, and make actionable decisions seamlessly. So with the help of OpenVINO Toolkit, we've developed our product called Viana um, to help organizations harness the power of machine learning and gather insights, make smart decisions, and help them automate their process. Yeah, it seems like something that uh, the world could benefit from. I mean, with the global market for AI and big data and IoT growing rapidly, you know, reaching 26 billion by 2025, uh, businesses looking for new ways to get more value out of that IoT data, whether it's efficiency or effectiveness or both. Uh, and then this seemingly unending appetite for solutions that can perform you know, AI tasks on edge devices while consolidating some of the big data processing tasks before they go to the, the cloud. Uh, so companies are seeking new ways of you know, driving security and you know, faster bandwidth, reduced costs, uh, better latency, and just, just increased performance. Um, as this happens, what trends and pain points do you see shaping the, the current and future state of the industry? That's, that's a good point. Um, I, I think the world has changed in the last two years, and the rate of change is much more faster. How humans interact with each other is, is now different. Um, and, and based on our research and, and my experience, the predominant drivers of the change are, are mostly one, the convenience. And, and convenience means you, today you let your car drive you around, um, you let your phone, you talk to your phone and, and order your food tonight, right? Um, in, in physical stores, you can go in and shop without even interacting to any humans. Uh, you, you can even, you know, do it without actually um, taking your wallet out. Um, and and that, those are amazing kind of um, experience that is being provided. But one thing's for sure, um, convenience is, is becoming more, uh, you know, kind of an expectation um, by customers. Um, and number two is experience. Um, today, people interact with technology and, and they're expecting the technology to to have a contextual interaction um, with humans, right? Like a good example is the smart speakers, you know, you expecting it to recognize your voice, your accent, um, your favorite online store. Um, you're expecting it to know the preference, your preference and recommend new products based on your interest. Um, how you watch your movies, yeah. you know, streaming services now are ba basically smart enough to recommend what's the next movie you should watch. Um, your social media account knows you better than your closest friend. All these trends continue to evolve um, and we will see a higher demand um, on, I think, edge computing, um, demand for faster bandwidth, um, tighter security, and, and definitely better and elegant solutions as people will likely to expect that online and offline experiences will become seamless. Yeah, for sure. And as the industry is evolving and these expectations are, are changing and growing, how, how does your solution help capitalize on these opportunities and solve some of these problems that are coming up? Um, as I've mentioned earlier, as, as humans expect to get the same experience and convenience that is offered online in the physical space, we believe that there is an emerging demand to track the physical space like a website. Um, we have designed and built Viana to take a sensor and extend its use beyond security and surveillance. Using the camera as a sensor powered by an edge device, we start offering the capability to track how humans interact with each other and to the world. And of course, we're doing it in a safe 
and, and ethical way. Also, Bill, we feel like we're lucky that even despite COVID, um, we managed to roll our product into three different continents. And we've got customers in different verticals from retail, banking, government, food manufacturing. And that's what really resonated with our customers is that the way we approach AI. And what I can think of is that one, we really seek to democratize AI. We, we want to break it down and make it easy. Um, and number two, um, we take, we're taking a hard kind of flow in terms of um, how can we continue to develop AI, and AI is very powerful, um, but still be ethical. Um, so, you know, having that sort of balance between um, making it simple and then at the same time as well with the power and, and, and reach that an AI can provide us, uh, we remain focused on making sure that we we are ethical. We do not, like a good example is we do not use um, random images um, from, from, from website. We basically create synthetic data, fake data, um, to be able to create our own and therefore um, in, in a way it's safer and, and we're not using any other people's content um, as we continue to do it. It is certainly a bit difficult. It's not as easy as the traditional way of doing it. Um, but those are the main reasons why I think um, our customers um, are trusting us. And as I'm diving deep into that, um, I've got a couple of slides here that I want to show um, around how we're actually tracking um, persona in, in an ethical way. So on this slide, um, you can see that I have um, on the left side, um, Joy, um, and on the right side, um, you've seen Joy's face being blurred. And that's the sort of kind of um, standard process that we do to make sure that we don't disclose any personal identifiable information. And you can see as well that we've tokenized Joy. So instead of calling her Joy in our database, um, she's basically has a token of A392KJ002. So you can see we can profile Joy using that ID. And as Joy goes through a store, for instance, that has hundred, hundreds of cameras, every time Joy goes into that zone, um, we can identify her. Um, we know what her behavior is and we know what kind of product that she's interacting with. Um, and those are rich behavioral information that is useful for the retailer. Um, but then we're not actually taking Joy's personal information at the end of the, at the, end of the journey. Um, the customer would just know that there is this person with this um, classifier as female young adult, and she's happy predominantly along the way of experiencing the retail store um, and have basically interacted in a couple of products along the way. Um, so that information is quite useful in helping retailers uh, you know, curate better experience for these types of persona. Um, and, and I think those are the key things that we've shifted um, our focus from just focusing on identifying who the person is, but actually not focus on the who, but focus on what are the things that they're interested, what are the intent and, and, and what are the other behavioral traits that will probably um, not allow us to capture name, emails, and, 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 and mobile phones, like the traditional way of tracking marketing information. Um, so I just want to share that, um, Bill, because I think that's quite important on how we kind of differentiated ourselves that we have a powerful platform and yet we didn't use that power to basically invade into somebody's privacy and we keep make sure that we've got a fine line that we, we follow in terms of being ethical and, and safe. Yeah, it seems like you've really thought this through and um, you know, building this powerful capability on this platform of trust uh, could be certainly a, a differentiator uh, in the market. Are there, are there other things that set you apart uh, in the market? With, with partners, we, we, we certainly see that Viana is easy to sell. Um, we, we have a program where um, within the sales conversation, if the customer decided let's run a proof of concept today, we can make it go live within the day. Um, also, whilst we can start small and quick, we have the ability to actually uh, take um, any existing models that the customers might have. And with you know, OpenVino, um, we help them optimize that and convert that into OpenVINO and the purpose of converting that to OpenVINO because it can actually 
generate more inference based on the existing compute. So it can just do more with, with less. Um, and then lastly, we, we do a lot of moonshot projects where customers have this personalization request where their business is quite different and they want to create a feature that's only relevant for them. So um, we, we cater for those kind of services. So that is mostly our key differentiator that we can go out and, and sell and it's easy to sell through our partners. Um, we can accommodate new models that are coming from um, our customers or, or anyone basically, they, they could bring their own model. And then lastly, um, that we can actually personalize uh, models to, to create a feature that, that is more fit to the business. Um, and also it's, it's quite simple for the users. Um, we, we take pride that we are taking something complex and we made it simple. And, and most of our customers are actually marketers and non-technical individuals. Um, also, we are now working with Intel where the project is all about how do we bring the capability to a student that is a 10 to 15 years old and, and they could train and build their own model and, and they could deploy it um, through our platform. That's amazing. I mean, being customer focused and making things simple is a powerful combination. Um, and we were talking about OpenVINO and working with Intel. Can you maybe say more about how working with Intel uh, has uh, been an, an enabler for you and helped you to solve some of these challenges and opportunities that are in front of you? Um, in, in, in different kind of levels, you guys have been really helpful. First, from an engineering standpoint, um, you guys have been really helpful on um, getting us exposed on most of the engineering activities you guys are doing. We um, collaborate together and we solve epic problems together. Um, we also have experience with Intel that you guys are e e expanding the, the sort of influence of um, kind of the horizon on, on where we play and where we innovate. Um, one example is that uh, Intel has a lot of universities that are innovating and researching and occasionally we have problems that basically um, overlaps between the private sector, the education sector, the government, and you bring all those talents together and, and solve those problems. And I think that helped us uh, sharpen our tools and, and become better engineers. Um, also the toolkits that you, you provide. Uh, Open Vino have really helped us go to market relatively quickly. Um, Viana started uh, pretty much when oh, um, COVID started and um, we were able to build the, the first version of the platform within three, um, four months around that time. And it's simply because we, we tap into the, the ecosystem that OpenVINO has already provided. The OpenVINO Zoo is already there, so we could access to a lot of OpenVINO um, models that's available, the inferencing engine, um, and, and the optimization that, that allows us to tap, even use old CPUs um, that allows us to infer. Um, so yeah, no, we were very thankful for the relationship. And then you guys have brought us into um, a lot of problem statements that um, otherwise we won't have access. And, and through that, um, that kind of um, more enjoyable for us and bringing products in the market because you're uh, you know closer to the people that you're helping with. Fantastic, that's great to hear. Hey, uh, can you maybe talk about a success story, something that stands out for you and you know one of your customers and some some great work that you guys have done together? Um, what comes to mind is, is Westpac. Uh, Westpac is one of the big four banks here in Australia, and they have about eight hundred plus branches. And out of those branches, they've got thousands of screens deployed. These are digital signage screens, and one of the problem statement that we're we're trying to help them solve is that they produce hundreds and hundreds of content um, and they don't know which content works. So um, in the past, they basically just take content that they have been doing on website um, and just putting it on, on, on signage screens. And to that point, they're really struggling to attribute value um, as to what value it basically brings in. So what we've done is we have put in cameras on top of screens and we start tracking on how people um, consume content. And, and you know, with that, we call it content effectiveness, where we have um, a rating on how people's basically attention towards the content would then indicate the effectiveness of the content. Um, out of that exercise, we have helped Westpac 
and their agencies to make better decisions on um, what kind of content to put in, um, what product category they're putting in. Is it a product base? Is it a lifestyle base? Is it mix? Um, what kind of animation style they, they need to use, size of font, and even day parting on the sort of schedule. Um, and after all of that, we've gone through COVID and, and we've learned so much through it. Um, but the success part is that they've actually managed to increase their conversion rate um, by almost 87%. Um, so that's really success. Even despite COVID, the number of kind of um, people going into branches have kind of significantly declined. Um, different personas as well are going into branches, not unlike before where it's consistent uh, and it's predictable. Um, so it was it was really, really amazing to see that project um, still continue to thrive um, despite COVID and, and despite this sort of a lot of change in terms of how banks are interacting with their customers. Yeah, 87% is an impressive number. And you can just see the power of getting that feedback on the content uh, like you were describing. Uh, that's amazing. So where can folks go to get more information uh, about MeldCX and Viana? Um, to learn more, um, they could go to our website, meldcx.com forward slash Viana. Um, also, there is a QR code they could scan um, and, and basically that would redirect them to the right page. Awesome. Thor, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Bill.